Once every decade or so, I encounter a book that I consider to be a seminal work offering insights and provocative research that makes it a breakthrough book. Dr. Todd, Dr. Todd Rose has written just such a book. He's a former Harvard University professor, co-founder and president of the Populist Think Tank. He says, every one of us has something valuable to contribute to society, but much of what we believe is often developed by bad information and false assumptions. And it actually can lead us to be personally making very bad decisions, even causing us to act against our own best interest. His new book is just amazing. It's one of those once in a decade books. And it's called Collective Illusions, a brilliant work that I am thrilled to discuss with him tonight. Would you please give a great welcome to Dr. Todd Rose. I want to say how grateful I am to have you here. This is a, an incredible sort of look at America, what we believe, and it's not what we think we believe about each other, is it? Right, yeah. The thing that was so shocking, you know, my think tank populace, we study what's called private opinion. Not just what people will say out loud, yeah. but what do they really think? And what we found in, in place after place, subject after subject is, we are spectacularly wrong about what the majority in America thinks and believes. And as a result, we often end up wanting to conform to the group. You know, yeah. no one likes to be against the group. And so our conformity gets weaponized and we end up following this phantom and, and we all end up doing something that almost nobody in the country really wants to do. During the early days of the pandemic, there was a perception that there was this massive toilet paper shortage and we all needed to rush to the store and get the last roll of toilet paper. And as a result, the shelves were empty. Was there a toilet paper shortage? No, and, and I, I love that you started with this one because I fell for it. I feel bad, you know, I, I wrote the book. And I feel I, better that you did. Yeah, my, wife, my wife said, you know, maybe you should change the topic of your book because I became the one, I, I knew, I actually know someone who owns a company that makes toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> I called him and I said, is this real? And he said, no. <laughs> but, Let me ask this question. How many of you went out and bought extra rolls of toilet paper because of, all right. So, so the, the cool yeah. kids. Yeah. The cool kids. Some of them are not being honest. I know darn well they went out and bought toilet paper. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> so my, my problem was I knew for sure there was no shortage. Yeah. But I was convinced everybody else thought there was. <laughs> And so I went there and I thought, well, I better get some, right? And yeah. so I'm there picking it up. I had, I mean, in our basement to this day, <laughs> we have enough for like Armageddon. And, you know, <laughs> but, and, and, you know it's fun when it's toilet paper, yeah. right? Small things. What happens when that collective illusion is about our fundamental values as a country? Mm. About the way we want to treat one another? See, that's when it becomes very, very, really life-changing for people. So in the book, it's collective illusions. What is a collective illusion that is dangerous for America? Look, so first of all, as, as we've been talking about, collective illusions are these instances where yeah. the majority of people in a group go along with something that they don't agree with simply because they incorrectly assume everybody else in the group believes it. They become destructive. I'll tell you the one for me okay. that I think is the most destructive right now we did something called the American Aspirations Index at Populous, looking at the private aspirations that Americans have for the future of the country. Here's what's crazy. Before we gave people this private opinion instrument, we just asked them, do you think we're more united or divided as a country? 82% said more divided. Half of those people said extremely divided. Worse, when you split by who you voted for in uh -huh. the last election, a majority of both sides said the other side no longer shares their values for the country, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And yet, when we put them through this private opinion instrument, completely different story. Out, oh. of, out of dozens and dozens of possibilities of what you could want for the country, across all demographics, we share most of them in common, our highest aspirations. But we don't think we do. So, so when you say we share aspirations, what are some of those aspirations so that we share? This is what makes me so happy and hopeful. The things we share in common across all demographics are nothing short of core American values. 
We want to be treated equally, regardless of background, right? We want a fair shot at earning our own success, uh. right? And we really don't want this group level grievance and expectation that we get handouts without earning it. We don't. And it, it's nothing short of, we still want the American dream, right? Mm. That, that the problem is not that we are divided as a country. The problem is that we believe we are divided and the consequences become real as a result. So we end up acting out what we think everybody believes rather than what the truth is. It's why I love this book. It was so eye-opening. One of those that I just said, oh my gosh, this guy ought to be on every platform and he's here with us and we've got more questions for Dr. Todd Rose. You better stick around because we're gonna find out what kind of impact our assumptions will have on our individual thinking and behavior, as well as on our communities. More with Dr. Todd Rose right after this. Welcome back. We're talking with Dr. Todd Rose. He's the author of this book. It is absolutely a page-turning, stunning revelation of what we're really about in this country. Uh, Todd, thanks for staying with us and continuing this discussion. When you talked about what we really believe deep down when we think we can be honest. I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. And frankly, the last few years, it's, it's been so easy to be pessimistic and think this country is toast. Yeah. I, I think now we're going to make it maybe. I, I do too. And, and look, if you're like me, throughout this, the last couple of years, there's this feeling like, am I crazy? Or did the whole country go crazy like overnight, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I thought, I, I knew we had some differences, but I thought we had some common values. This is what I hear across the board. My progressive friends, my libertarian friends. Am I crazy or did the country go crazy? Some of them are, by the yeah. way. Just, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. And, I'm sorry about And they're on Twitter, right? Um, <laughs> they're on Twitter. And, yeah, they're responding to everything I right. tweet. <laughs> yes, they are. We'll hear from them soon. Yes, we will. But let's talk about some more things that are not what people perceive. What are some more collective illusions that people ought to know and might be surprised by? Well, look... Not surprisingly, a lot of them have to do with our politics, but let me, let me talk about something that's a little more personal and, and close to home. What people mean by a good life. Hmm. What do they want out of life, Yeah, right? We, we did the largest private opinion study ever, looking at the trade-off priorities across 76 possibilities for what could be a good life. Everything from being a parent to being the richest person you know, right? Yeah. In private, the things that mattered most to Americans across all demographics had to do with character, relationships, religion, faith, yeah. right? They want to be good people, uh -huh. right? They want to live fulfilling lives. However, when you ask them, what do you think most Americans would say? It's a completely different story. What, they think the, everybody they is think? obsessed with status, wealth, power. Let me give you a, a yeah. finer point. The issue of fame. Yeah. Out of 76 possible trade-off parties, remember, you can't game these instruments, that, that you can't fake them. Yeah. We think that most Americans would rank that as the number one most important thing to a successful life. Fame. Yeah, which kind of seems right. Like we think everybody cares about it. In private, it's dead last. Dead last. 70s. Collective illusions don't get bigger than that. Wow. Now, here's the problem. This generation's illusions, if we don't do something, tend to become next generation's private opinion. Here's, here's an example mm. with fame. My colleagues at UCLA have been studying the way media and culture affects middle school children. They've done this for many, many years. Up until just a few years ago, the dominant theme every year was about character. They wanna be honest, they wanna be mm. good friends to yeah. people. A few years ago it changed and it hasn't changed back. It's now I wanna be famous. You know, I think every CEO needs to read this book because they have a different understanding of their customers <laughs> than, than is real. You know who else needs to read this book? Every pastor in America needs to read Collective Illusions and understand their congregation is not who they think they are. And I think this is really important because the, the two groups you just named, leaders and pastors, have an outsized effect on shattering Collective Illusions, right? Uh. And so by falling for the illusion and, and not shattering it, we are allowing it to be promoted, right? So for example, we looked at um, what people want out of work. Yeah. You know what they don't want? Out of 50 some odd possibilities, they don't want leaders taking social positions all the time. They just don't. 
Like, stay uh, out of it. Just focus on my job and what brings me fulfillment. What a novel idea. If right? you sell soft drinks, just sell me the soft drink and leave me to decide yeah, my politics. Exactly. And, you know, and I think that there's a role, especially for, for pastors, mm. right? Because the only way out of these illusions, the only way, is if we commit to being true about our private selves in public, right? It's a civic obligation. I owe you to be honest, yeah. right? And that has always been the call of our faith leaders, right? Call us to our better angels. Uh. Remind us about our obligations to one another. If we can recommit to that, we'll be just fine. You know, I found myself in reading the book thinking, this is a better sermon than most of the ones I've heard from pulpits because of what you just said calling people to be who they really are and not pretending to have feelings and emotions. But th there is a sense in which people wear their feelings on their sleeve and they get offended by everything. Is that real or is that a collective illusion? <laughs> this is one of my favorite collective illusions. So in private, an overwhelming majority of Americans say, listen, I really wish people would be more honest with me. I like yeah. hearing different views, right? I want that. Um, but they are so convinced that other people are so sensitive that they just can't handle differences of opinions, right? Which from our research is why we know this, that two thirds of Americans right now admit to self-silencing, mm -hmm. two thirds. That, that is four times higher than during McCarthyism. That's scary. Yeah, and, and it's not just cancel culture, right? Which is its own huge problem. Yeah. It is that we're decent people who don't want to offend one another and so because we, are, we think everybody's so sensitive, we just say nothing. And meanwhile, we allow this vocal fringe to end up masquerading as group consensus, and it leads us astray as a society. I'm so glad you have been here. Collective Illusions is the book, and uh, I hope that you will get a copy because, uh, and again, I say every leader, every pastor, if you're the head of the Rotary Club, whoever you are, Collective Illusions, it's available right now. You can check out Huckabee.tv. We'll tell you exactly where to find this book and a whole lot more from Dr. Todd Rose.